So here we have Nita Strauss. How are you, Nita? How's your knee after Hi. your surgery? Oh, thank you so much for asking. Uh, it's it's better than it was, better every single day. Of course, uh, you know, I have to still be careful, diligent with the rehab and everything else, but uh, it's getting better all the time. You got the torn meniscus, if I'm not wrong? Yes. Yes, exactly. We Greek are familiar with uh, these words because they're all Greek, so everybody knows what meniscus is. So, <laughs> you probably, <laughs> probably better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, so you haven't fully recovered, but uh, uh, you 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 just need to be uh, very careful with uh, the recovery of this. Huh? Yes, exactly. So um, I can skip but not run. Uh, lots of physio, exactly. Um, I can jump a little bit, but nothing too high, you know, no spins yet, anything like that. But uh, I can perform, you know, I just finished an Alice Cooper tour. I start another tour next week. So as long as I can perform, I'm okay. Did it happen because of your uh, of the way that you play guitar, or was it just uh, an accident? It was on stage, yeah. Um, you know, the Alice Cooper show is very physical. You know, lots of running, lots of jumping, lots of stairs, and so actually, um, where it actually happened was on the stairs. Um, but at least it was the bottom of the stairs, which is probably for the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a second solo album. Uh, out in the beginning of uh, July, called uh, the Call of the Void. Uh, yes. What made you have lots of amazing guests in your second solo album? In your first solo album, it was an instrumental one. In the second one, you try to have uh, songs with vocals and have some guests, not only the instrumental side of, uh, of Nita. Uh, what made you have these guests? Uh, it really just was the next natural progression. You know, I think as an artist, you have to always push yourself and try new things and step out of your comfort zone, you know, not just do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so it just felt like the next step, you know, to collaborate with some amazing singers since I don't sing myself. Uh, you know, the, the best thing is to get these incredible vocalists from different bands, different genre, different style, different eras of music and uh, collaborate to make a record together. Mm -hmm. And uh, what makes it more difficult to write a song from the instrumental side of the, of the song to having a, a verse, a chorus and so on? Uh, did it? Did it? Uh, was it uh, difficult for you to write uh, a song with a structure uh, uh, for lyrics and stuff? You know, even the instrumental songs pretty much have that structure for the most part. Not every single one, and not every single song, but you know, the songs, even the instrumental songs, still do sort of have intro and verse and a pre-chorus and a chorus. Uh, so really, you know, the the distinction for me was finding uh the balance between you know the just pure creativity just you know write whatever you want write what's in your heart and then what will work best for this specific vocalist or this specific type of song you know is it too long is it too short is it too high for the singer or too low you know anything like that so the, that really more than the arrangements um those were the constraints that i that i found more challenging mm -hmm. Uh, did you have some guests in your mind before starting to write the song or you had the songs and you you were saying that this one fits with Anders and this one fits with uh, Lizzie Hale crew? So we really had uh, like a type of vocalist in mind, you know, and maybe not necessarily a specific like Sometimes it was specific, like, of course, the Golden Trail could only be Anders. And if it wasn't Anders, it would be instrumental, you know. Uh, but uh, there were some other songs that we thought like, hey, we need a, a female powerhouse vocalist on this song. And that could be Lizzie Hale. It could be Dorothy. It could be Lilith Sarr, you know, um, and we ended up with all three, which is amazing, you know. Uh, and then another, you know, another situation like the Wolf You Feed, where we thought, you know, we need somebody who has a strong metal vocal and a strong clean vocal. So, you know, Alisa was an incredible choice for that. You know, she's such an accomplished metal vocalist, you know, in her time in Arch Enemy, everybody knows that. But I think not a lot of people know how good of a singer she is at her clean singing. So uh, it was just a matter of 
putting the puzzle pieces and finding the right person for the right song. Were there any singers or artists in general that you reached out for them but never made it to the album? Uh, there were a few. And uh, really, it was just a matter of timing. You know, maybe a lot of us were making albums at the same time, uh, you know, in the pandemic and just after. So uh, actually, I think it's kind of a good thing that I didn't check every single person off the list because it means when I make a third album, I'll have some more guests. <laughs> Yeah. And find and have the, the rest of the, the remaining artists that uh, couldn't make it because of a time schedule. Exactly, exactly. Uh, a third album and a fourth album and so forth. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure you'll find many, many more uh, artists, many, many more of your idols, uh, uh, teenage idols, perhaps. Like you. I hope so, yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's nice to collaborate, you know, it's, um, it's, always been a, a bit of a lonely process making instrumental guitar music and uh so it was really cool to you know be able to work with different writers and different vocalists and different people to make this album happen how was it to write a song for alice cooper after playing live with him for so many years you know tell him you should sing like this and you could sing something <laughs> like this no, <laughs> I don't. I didn't do any of that. Um, so the Alice song was really unique um, because I had the opportunity to work with Tommy Henriksen, who is, of course, my stage left bandmate partner in Alice Cooper, and also longtime writing partner of Alice's. He worked on the most recent Hollywood Vampires records, actually produced the last Hollywood Vampires record, Rise. Uh, he's worked on the last few Alice Cooper records. So Tommy really has a very good sense of Alice as a vocalist. And so, you know, we sort of got together and I asked Tommy, what does he like to sing? Like, what key does he like to sing in? And when we crafted the vocal for that song, we really didn't, you know, give Alice anything out of his range. We stayed in the Alice Cooper lane, you know, uh, there's no rapping, there's no, you know, high notes or long, long held out notes for him. You know, we really tried to make him a song that would be comfortable for him to sing. Um, so that was what he did. He went in to his studio in Phoenix. Um, I think there was only one note that I gave him that I, you know, we asked him to redo, and it was just one word that was wrong. Other than that, he he gave the perfect delivery immediately. There were no notes. There was you no know, like I wasn't in there like a producer, like sing it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should do that just for once, <laughs> just to see. I know how, I, how I, I I missed my opportunity. <laughs> Let's let's see in the next uh, in the next solo album. Uh, exactly, I'll get him back, should... and then I'll and then I'll crack the whip. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only you now; it's my turn. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is payback. Yeah, but beware, he has snakes. You should. Have... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, your album has already made a significant success even before its release. As Dead Inside, the song with David Draymond from uh, from Disturbed, was the first number one, if, I, if I'm not wrong, for a female solo artist in a mainstream rock chart after 32 years. I, I don't know if it's the first time ever, but I, I think it's in the, the third, any, anything, anything is huge. Anything is huge, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, the last female artist to the last female solo artist to go to number one at rock radio was Alanis Morissette. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I don't really know if you can consider it really me doing it alone, because obviously the, the song is with David. And if not for David, the song wouldn't have, you know, wouldn't have the success that it had as a collaboration. Um, but it, like, as you said, anything's cool. Just to be in the conversation is cool. You know, like, and if I, as a female solo artist, can encourage more women to go out there and make their own music without feeling like they have to wait for, you know, the right band or this or that, like, you know, that's, that's my goal. That's my end game to encourage women to pick up the guitar and play and put out music and follow their passion and their dream. Yeah. And uh, the thing is that you're not only uh, a touring guitar player of uh, artists. Now you are uh, an accomplished artist, uh, you have a, a band and you can call David Drayman and make him say yes and sing on your song. Okay. I think it's it's great on your part. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's not that you have David Drayman so the song has success. 
the song has success because it's yours. Okay. And because David Raymond sings, okay, maybe you can have another uh, another success uh, with the Alice Cooper song or the, I don't know which other one. But having all these artists, uh, singers sing uh, on your album uh, is a success that nobody can take from you. So it's, uh, I think it's great. And I saw that you have uh, that you have Casey Carlson as the singer of your solo band that you are that you are touring. I've watched a few videos uh, of her, and she's really versatile. She's a kind of uh, Alisa kind of singer uh, yes. in both growls and uh, melodic parts. Uh, will she, will she sing all the songs, even songs? with male vocalists from your album. Yes, so that's actually why I chose her um, in the first place is, you know, I was really struggling to find a vocalist to tour with because, you know, you have David Draymond, you have Anders Frieden, you have Alisa, you have Lizzie Hale, you know, like there's, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, I have a small tour, you know, <laughs> like I, I can only have so many people and, you know, I can't afford to pay like one male vocalist, one female vocalist, one growl vocalist, you know, like, um, and so Casey is an amazing, um, uh, amazing choice for me because she's so versatile. She can sing male vocals. She can sing female vocals. She can growl, you know, she can hold long notes, you know, she can do the rock voice. She can do the metal voice. So really everything that she covers all the bases on my record. And uh, it was it was easier to find a girl that could sing the boy songs than a boy that could sing the girl songs, yeah. <laughs> you know. So um, she's she's such a talent. Um, we are going to play our first show with her next week. Uh, so very very excited to get. Did on you know her? How how did you find her? I found her on social media. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I found her uh, on TikTok. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, apart from your uh, from playing guitar, you combine it with your love for fitness. Can you explain us what is the body shred that you're doing? Yes, uh, body shred is a fitness challenge, which is really has the goal to get our community, the you know hard rock and metal community, more into the fitness space. Because let's face it, we're not the healthiest people <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and when I started embracing a more healthy lifestyle for myself. Uh, I started getting a lot of questions from fans and other musicians and stuff like, well, what did you do? How did you do it? And I found myself, you know, I would go on my Instagram or my Facebook and write these long comments in responses, you know, drink a lot of water, eat the protein, you know, do this exercise for your abs, blah, 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 blah. blah. And uh, so my boyfriend, Josh, who's also very into fitness, uh, he's very muscular. Uh, he was like, why don't you do something more official and encourage people to get into this lifestyle? You know, because the fitness world is really uh, intimidating for a lot of like metal people. You know, it's like you see these women in the matching pink, you know, bra and leggings and like really tan guys and, you know, rah, rah, rah. And like, that's, you know, it's not really our vibe, you know, where it's like sort of more down and dirty and real and realistic, you know, so we needed a community that our community could relate to. And so that's where Body Shred came in. Um, we just, launch the fifth challenge yeah. uh we have i think almost 700 members from all over the world uh they're competing to win an ibanez jiva my signature guitar uh marshall amp a uh, trip to first form supplement headquarters to work out with me in person all expenses paid uh so we have a lot of different people providing the motivation uh and most importantly the support for people to change their lives mm -hmm. Um, how demanding is it to play uh, a completely different kind of music like you played with Demi Lovato after playing with Alice Cooper? How, how was that challenge for you? Uh, I wouldn't say it was too challenging. Uh, the solo stuff is definitely a lot more challenging. <laughs> um, the Demi set was, uh, you know, it's not as different as, as you might think. Uh, it was a very rock show, you know, and actually more of that sort of modern rock than what we do with Alice Cooper. I think I played, 
even a little bit more like myself at certain points in Demi's show because I didn't have the constraints of like staying within that classic rock style. You know, when you're playing a song like uh, Billion Dollar Babies, let's say, there's no room for like sweep arpeggios or tapping, you know, any like any modern fancy stuff. You want to play the song as it's intended, you know, the way it was written, the way that Alice Cooper fans expect to hear it. So when someone like Demi does a rock arrangement of a song like Sorry Not Sorry, one of her big hits, and says, here's the solo, do whatever you want. There's a lot more room for expression, you know, like you can sort of be creative and go go all out because you don't have this, you know, the original song to pay respect to, you know, that people have been listening to for 40, 50 years. So uh, it wasn't too different at all. How did the Alice Cooper fans react to your choice? Did, did, did you see any strange reactions? Yeah, of course, you know, anytime you, anytime you do anything at know. all, there's going to be a lot of reactions, yeah. you know, like anything, I, you know, I, I can, I, I'm here with you today with no makeup on and my hair in a ponytail and someone's going to come on your video and be like, she looks so different, you know, like <laughs> there's any, you look great, but anyway. well, thank you. I, I don't mean it like that, but it's just like, yeah. you know, I can drink a, a San Pellegrino here and someone's going to say she should drink Perrier, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. why Pellegrino? <laughs> why Pellegrino? It's, you know, she must, she must hate a Perrier, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. so, uh, of course there's a strong reaction always. Um, I, you know, I, I put out the song with, uh, with Alisa and people say, I hate the screaming. And then I put out the song with, you know, with David Raymond and people say it's it's too straightforward, it's it's too uh, mainstream. And then I put out a song with no vocals and people say, your instrumental songs are boring. You should put, do something with the singer. And then I put out songs with the singer and people say, stay true to yourself and do instrumental music. That's who you are. So anything, anything that you do, there's going to be strong opinions. And I think that the important thing is that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the important thing is that you have faith in yourself and your path and you do what you think is right and uh you can be proud of your own decisions making and anything beyond that is uh it just comes and goes yeah you visited greece with alice cooper last summer and your social media has a few photos from from our country how did you find the experience of playing here I love it. I loved it. Um, I've been to Greece one time before, actually, uh, as a vacation. Um, I, I went there with my boyfriend at the end of one tour, and we really just we fall in love with first of all the food. My God, the best, some of the best food I've had in my life in Greece. Yeah. Um, the beach we love, the architecture, the history, um, and then to come back and experience it in a new way last year. Uh, you know, in my career, you know, the thing I love uh, was just made us fall even more in love with the country. So definitely would love to come back to spend some more time, eat some more food yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, play in some different cities. Because I really have only visited Athens and the surrounding area of Athens. So I'd like to visit some some more places as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, would you be interested in joining a band as a full-time member, not as a touring member uh, only? Um, you never say never. Um, but the way that my schedule is right now really works for me. You know, I have a uh, I have Alice Cooper, which keeps me quite busy. Um, I will play some shows with Demi whenever my schedule allows. Whenever I'm off from a band like Alice, I can go on tour with my solo band. You know, I start my solo tour a week from today or tomorrow, you know, eight days, I have my first show back as a solo artist. So the way that my schedule is now uh, is pretty flexible. And uh, I like that about it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to create your dream band and be the guitar player, your, 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 uh, your seat is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's ready. And which other members would it have that you haven't played so far? Don't tell me Alice Cooper on vocals. No, no. Actually, it, it is people that I've played with, but um, if I'm totally honest, I get to tour with my dream band, with my solo band. Um, my boyfriend is my, my drummer. My best friend is my keyboard player. 
I've had my, uh, you know, my bass player and rhythm guitar player since my first tour in 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, my crew is amazing. Um, I honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't put a better band together if I had the pick of everybody in the world. I would stick with my team. Fantastic. Um, how did you react when you were told that uh, Ibanez had created a signature guitar for you and you were the first female artist to have achieved that? I cried. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were we were sitting at um, at lunch. You know, my Ibanez artist rep took me and Josh to lunch, and you know, he said, "I I, I guess you're probably expecting some news. Like, you know, I told you I had some news for you, and we'd like to make you a signature guitar." And I just cried at the table. You know, tears of happiness. And uh, you know, he said, "Congratulations!" And how excited they were. And he said you know, if you, you know, if you can take some time and think about what you want and, you know, drop some ideas, maybe we can have something ready, you know, next year. And I was like, I'm ready now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was ready immediately. So we sat at the table right there, you know, he had his computer there and with a spec sheet and we, we discussed and decided on what actually would become the original Jiva 10. We designed it right there at the table uh, there's no difference between what we discussed there at the table and what is in my hands on stage and in stores now. So the, the final specs were decided at that very meeting. Fantastic. 